Pamina Nasir. And uh, today I'm going to uh, take lecture on metabolic skeletal ages. Can you hear me? Madam, uh, okay. So there are uh, four types of uh, bone cells. Uh, osteogenic cells are the stem cells uh, which differentiate into the uh, osteoblasts. And osteoblasts are the bone forming uh, cells. They form bone matrix. And uh, they differentiate into the osteocytes uh, which maintains the bone tissues. And uh, osteoblasts uh, uh, are derived from the monocytes and the uh, macrophages. So the basis of the metabolic bone disease depends upon the these uh, main, mainly on these two cells, osteoclasts and the osteoclasts. So what happens, there is continuous bone resorption and uh, bone uh, formation. Uh, bone formation by the osteoclastic activity and uh, bone resorption by the osteoclastic activities. So on x-rays, when osteoclastic activity occur, it appears uh, as decreased bone density. And when bone, uh, osteoblastic activity occurs, it appears as increased bone des density. So a bone matrix is the osteoid and it is a protein mixture. And uh, it is 33% uh, type 1 collagen and 67% uh, calcium salt, that is the uh, calcium hydroxide, uh, hydroxyapatite. And um, it is important in several disease causes. And uh, the failure of osteoid to mentalize lead to osteomalacia in adults and rickets in children. Now coming to the osteoporosis, in this uh, the osteoid is normal. There is normal mineralization of the uh, osteoid, but there is uh, imbalance of the osteoblastic activity and the osteoclastic activity. So here you can see this is normal bone and increased osteoclastic activity leads to this porous bone in osteoporosis. It is most common uh, metabolic skeletal disease and uh, more, it is a silent disease and mostly people come to know uh, about osteoporosis when they first uh, get their fracture. The radiological investigation uh, which should be done to uh, uh, diagnose the osteoporosis are the plain x-rays which includes the x-ray lumbosacral spine, x-ray hand, x-ray hip joint and bone mineral density measurement. Bone mineral density is the amount of uh, calcium hydroxyapatite hydroxy crystals in the bone, and it is done by dual energy X ray absorptiometry that is called as DEXA. To rule out this uh, bone mineral density, a uh, patient is uh, kept in a machine which sends two types of uh, X rays. One uh, X-ray is uh, ex, uh, absorbed, the, uh, is absorbed by the soft tissues, and uh, one of the X-ray is absorbed by the bone. Then the uh, so absorption of X-ray by the soft tissues is subtracted uh, by the uh, absorbed X-ray by the uh, bones. This is how the bone mineral density is measured, and it is scored by Z score and T score. Now coming to the plain radiograph, there will be a diminished radiographic density. As I told you, there is increased osteoclastic activity in osteoporosis. So there will be decreased bone density uh, in the osteoporosis. The vertebral osteoporosis manifests as penciling of the vertebrae, which will uh, I will show you later on, and the uh, compression fractures along the superior end plate, inferior end plate, and uh, compression fracture of the vertebral body. In tubular bones, there will be a thinning of the cortex. And uh, uh, there are two types of uh, trabeculae. Uh, there are two types of trabeculae in the vertebrae, primary and the second. The primary trabeculae, this is normal uh, vertebral body. 
with the uh, vertical uh, or primary trabeculae and the transverse or the secondary trabeculae. What happens in the osteoporosis that secondary trabeculae are resolved? Only vertical or primary trabeculae remains. So here you can see as the disease is progressing, only the vertical trabeculae are seen and giving a striated like appearance. Secondly, I told you that there is, will be penciling of the vertebrae. This is because of the uh, decreased bone density, penciling of the vertebrae is seen. This is uh, actually lumbosacral spine of a normal adult, and this is osteoporotic um, lumbosacral spine. Here you can see uh, the size of the vertebral bodies is normal, density is normal, while uh, there is generalized decreased density uh, is seen involving these lumbosacral spine. Along with that, there is penciling of the vertebrae. Here you can see the outline is of the increased density. And the, there are multiple compression fracture along the superior end plate. Here you can see there is the height of the vertebrae is decreased because of the compression fracture. This is normal height and this is decreased height. This is, this is somewhat normal, but the, the compression fracture has started. There, again, this is compression fracture and it is causing wedging of the vertebrae. This is also wedging of the vertebrae. The anterior height is wedging is the anterior height is decreased as compared to the posterior height of the vertebral body. So this is compression fracture, this is compression fracture. Again, this is compression fracture. These are the osteophytes because of the osteoarthritic activity. So uh, in vertebrae, we will uh, uh, find uh, in osteoporosis, generalized decreased bone density, penciling of the vertebrae, and multi-level compression fractures. And I also told you about the trabeculae. There will be striated appearance of the uh, vertebrae. I will show you. So here again, there is uh, X-ray. This is X-ray lumbosacral spine lateral view, demonstrating uh, generalized decrease density, penciling of the vertebrae, and the compression uh, fracture at multiple level. Now this is. Uh, <clears throat> compression fracture of whole of the vertebral body and this type of vertebrae is called as vertebra plana. This is vertebra plana. When there is a compression fracture of whole of the vertebral body. If there is a compression fracture is involving superior end plate or the inferior end plate and it is causing wedging, it is not called as vertebra plana. Now, there, again, uh, uh, there is a feature like uh, the thinning of the uh, cortex, which is measured uh, in the hand bones, especially the metacarpal bones. Here you can see this is normal uh, cortical thickness, and this is thinning of the cortex. This uh, cortical width should be one third, more than one third of the width of the metacarpal. This cortex should be more than one third of the width of the metacarpal. Here you can see this is more than one third of the width of the metacarpal while there is thinning of the cortex is appreciated in this x-ray. Along with that there is generalized decrease bone density. Now there is a condition which is called as disuse osteoporosis and it is seen after uh, when there is no muscular activity after a fracture, usually after a uh, fracture and it is seen few weeks after the fracture and it leads to the um, focal osteoporosis. Here you can see a decreased bone density along, uh, adjacent to the joints. This is called as periarticular osteopenia or juxta articular osteopenia and it is seen distilled to the site of the injury. So it is involving all the periarticular region. Osteo, this type of picture is also seen, uh, can be seen in other types of osteoarthritis uh, and arthritis, but uh, 
if it is seen after uh, fracture then this is called as disuse osteoporosis now this is a ct scan of the lumbosacral spine and this is bone window uh, here you can see um, the uh, the high this is normal uh, ct scan of the lumbosacral spine with uh, few uh, osteophytes but this is osteoporotic spine so the bone density is normal here you can see there is a diffuse dif decrease in the bone density with the prominence of the primary trabeculae these primary trabeculae are prominent and secondary trabeculae which were transverse are not visualized in these uh, vertebral bodies along with that there, there are compression fracture at multiple levels uh, here you can see compression fracture involving the superior end plate here it is involving the inferior end plate so multi level compression fractures penciling of the vertebrae decreased bone density and prominence of the primary trabeculae or the vertical uh, trabeculae now coming to the uh, rickets now uh, what happened uh, in the osteoporosis it was the osteoclastic activity which leads to the decreased bone density and there was an imbalance between the osteoclastic activity and the osteoblastic activity while in rickets uh, there is unmineralization or unmineralized matrix due to the deficiency of the prolonged deficiency of vitamin d when this happens in children it is called as rickets and when it, this is seen in adults it is called as osteomalacia in osteoporosis bone matrix is normal there is normal mineralization of the bone matrix but there is imbalance between the osteoclastic activity and the osteoblastic activity while in rickets there will be unmineralized matrix at the growth plates in uh, due to the deficiency of the vitamin d uh, if there is uh, um, if the rickets is due to deficiency of the vitamin d or it is vitamin d resistant rickets the imaging features will remain same the radiological investigation which should be carried out for uh, for the evaluation of rickets uh, are the x ray bilateral disc joints and x ray bilateral knee joint now what happens if the um, uh, infant is crawling then uh, the x ray bilateral disc joint will uh, give you more information and if the infant is uh, walking then the x ray bilateral knee joint will give you more information along with that x ray skull and uh, x ray chest is also done now uh, uh, there are four parts of the bone uh, of the tibular bones epiphysis and the uh, metaphysis and the diaphysis and in between the epiphysis and the metaphysis the broadened end is called as metaphysis and shaft is the diaphysis in between the metaphysis and the epiphysis lies the epiphyseal plate or the growth plate or physis uh, during uh, the natal period only ossification of the diaphysis occur the epiphyseal ossification occurs after birth and with growing age and uh, all the growth occurs at the Uh, growth plate and this is cartilaginous and it is not seen on the x-rays only a gap is seen uh, on x-rays cartilage is not visualized uh, on x-rays until or unless it is calcified when this growth plate fuses with the epiphysis uh, no more grow, uh, more growth can occur and it is seen after 18 years of age now the radiological features of uh, rickets is the generalized osteopenia because of the unmineralized uh, osteoid and lack of zone of provisional calcification now what is provisional uh, zone of provisional calcification as i told you that uh, this is growth plate this growth plate has uh, histologically it has five zones and the zone which is adjacent to the metaphysis is the zone of provisional calcification 
and uh, uh, osteoid uh, is deposited uh, over uh, the over here in the zone of provisional calcification and it is there is it, it is uh, lacking in the brackets so there will be lack of zone of provision calcification and this is appreciated by the widening of the growth plate there will be a widening of this growth plate and the it will cause broadening of the metaphysis broadening of the metaphysis is also called as splaying of the metaphysis and the, the metaphysis will become concave this concavity of the metaphysis is called as cupping and then um, there will be uh, indistinctness of the metaphysis and this is called as fraying of the metaphysis these three features are the uh, pathognomic features of the rickets widening of the growth plate broadening of the metaphysis that is the splaying and uh, the concavity of the metaphysis that is the cupping of the metaphysis fraying of metaphysis that is indistinctness of the metaphysis along with that bowing of long bones rickettic rosary and frontal bossing is seen for rickettic rosary x-ray chest is done for frontal bossing x-ray skull is done and to rule out all these features x-ray wrist joint is uh, done uh, if the infant is crawling and if the infant is uh, walking then the x-ray knee joint is done now this is x ray a hand um, of a 2 year old child and this is normal x ray the epiphysis i told you uh, during uh, the natal period only ossification of the uh, diaphysis is uh, done and uh, the uh, ossification of epiphysis is uh, uh, ossification of epiphysis occurs after birth with time and uh, Okay, I will tell you. Just wait. Okay, so this is X-ray of a two-year-old child. Here you can see. Uh, we will take question answers in the end. Okay. so here you can see this is epiphysis the epiphysis of uh, the uh, ra distal radius has uh, appeared in two year old child while the epiphysis distal epiphysis of the ulna has not appeared only a dot can be visualized so this lucent area is the growth plate area this is growth plate this is epiphysis and this broader uh, distal end is the metaphysis and the sharp is called as diaphysis this is normal x-ray now uh, coming to the um, x-ray of a rickettic child here you can see this is epiphysis of the radius and uh, diaphysis and metaphysis and epiphysis of the uh, ulna distal epiphysis of the ulna and this area is the uh, area of the growth plate which i told you appears lucent on x-rays and uh, this broadened area is the metaphysis and this is diaphysis so all the features of rickets can be visualized uh, in this x ray uh, there is broadening of the uh, growth plate there is uh, broadening of widening of the growth plate and broadening of the metaphysis that is called as splaying of the metaphysis the metaphysis has become concave and this is called as cupping and there is indistinctness of the metaphysis that is called as spring of the metaphysis here you can see there is no concavity of the metaphysis there is the uh, zone of provisional calcification that is this dense area is also visualized and there is no widening of the growth plate while in this x ray there is widening of the growth plate broadening of the metaphysis that is spraying of the metaphysis concavity of the metaphysis that is called as cupping and indistinctness of the metaphysis that is called as spraying so these are the features which are seen in the x ray again uh, there is uh, this is x ray of a infant 
and in this uh, uh, x-ray met epiphysis of the radius and ulna and of the metacarpal bones has not appeared yet and um, this is under one year old um, the child's age would be under one year and uh, here you can see there is uh, cupping of the metaphysis increased concavity of the metaphysis indistinctness of the metaphysis that is uh, praying and uh, the broadening of the metaphysis that is the displaying involving both distal ends of the radius and ulna now this is uh, x ray uh, knee joint bilateral x ray knee joint ap view uh, demonstrating uh, the features of uh, ricket this is uh, epiphysis of the uh, tibia and this is metaphysis there is widening of the growth plate indistinctness of the metaphysis broadening of the metaphysis and concavity is appreciated along the uh, distal uh, metaphysis of the femur now uh, because of the um, softening of the bone bowing of the long bones also occur here you can see there is marked bowing of uh, bilateral femur femori and bilateral tibia and fibula now coming to the uh, ricketic rosary ricketic rosary is the bulbous enlargement of the costochondral junction now what happens uh, these are ribs and the, this is the posterior portions of the rib and these are the anterior portions of the rib now the costochondral junctions the i told you cartilage is not visualized on x rays so the uh, costal cartilages are not visualized so the this is this would be costochondral uh, junction and there is widening of in bulbous enlargement of the anterior part of the ricket so this is called as ricketic rosary and it is uh, visualized clinically as well now uh, the when there is insufficient mineralization of the osteoid uh, in the adults it is called as osteomalacia and uh, it is due to the um, uh, vitamin d deficiency or defect in the phosphate metabolism and uh, patients of osteomalacia may be asymptomatic or they may uh, present with pain and tenderness and there will be uh, increased alkaline phosphatase uh, because of the increased osteoblastic activity now radiographic features of the osteomalacia Uh, there will be diffuse demineralization uh, will be will give uh, osteoporotic like pattern there will be diffuse decreased bone density and uh, coarsen trabeculae and the pathognomonic feature of osteomalacia is the loser zone which are insufficiency fractures insufficiency fracture which are due to any pathology which or any deficiency uh, and uh, the fractures which are uh, which are not due to trauma And so the loser one, we will be doing loser. One. And another feature which is seen in the osteomalacia is the protrusion acetabuli. Now loser zones are also called as pseudo fracture, and they are often bilateral and symmetrical, and they are uh, incomplete uh, fractures uh, which are perpendicular to the long axis of the tibular bone. Here you can see uh, there is a transverse lucent band oriented at the right angle, perpendicular to the long axis of the bone, and they are seen at the site of the position of osteoid or uh, at the entry site of neutron vessels. So uh, the most common location are the pubic rami, proximal femur, scapula, lower ribs, and ulna. and their margins are usually sclerotic sclerotic in radiology means of increased density or whitish and osteolytic a decrease bone density osteolytic means decrease bone density now here are different uh, images of uh, loser zones loser zones involving the superior pubic rami and the inferior pubic rami along with that you can appreciate the sclerotic margins or whitish margins 
these are the loser zones involving the neck of the femur these loser zones are involving the shaft of the long bone and they are at the site of nutrient vessels they have sclerotic margins and central leaf sense along with that there will be decreased bone density now uh, this is uh, another feature of the osteomalacia this is uh, ct scan lumbosacral spine bone window demonstrating uh, that the uh, vertebrae has acquired codfish like okay. and uh, the here you can see there is increased concavity uh, along the superior end plate and the inferior end plate there is generalized decreased bone density again primary trabeculae are prominent here you can see the vertical trabeculae are prominent and there is uh, increased concavity of the superior end plate and the inferior end plate which is giving picture of the codfish this is another um, feature of the osteomalacia now cortuso acetabuli is the intra pelvic displacement or medial displacement of the acetabulum and the femoral head into the pelvic cavity here you can see the femoral head has protruded into the pelvic cavity because of the uh, bone softening these uh, and it is seen bilaterally more mark on the right side and it is also seen in the osteomalacia there is generalized decreased bone density then coming to hyperparathyroidism hyperparathyroidism is the effect of excess parathyroid hormone in the body it may be primary secondary or tertiary and uh, what is the cause of primary hyperparathyroidism anyone what is the cause of primary hyperparathyroidism adenoma very good parathyroid adenoma can lead to uh, primary hyperparathyroidism parathyroid carcinoma parathyroid hyperplasia all these causes leads to the um, excess of the parathyroid and what is the cause of secondary hyperparathyroidism what is the cause of secondary hyperparathyroidism Okay, in renal failure, when there is uh, yes, chronic renal failure, when there is hypocalcemia, it uh, uh, increases the secretion of parathyroid hormone and it leads to the hyperparathyroidism. And what is the cause of tertiary hyperparathyroidism? Anyone out of one thirty-eight? no renal failure is not cause of tertiary hyperparathyroidism no actually tertiary is due to the autonomous parathyroid adenoma this leads to the increased parathyroid hormone okay the radiological features of primary secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism are a mixture so the radiographic features of the hyperparathyroidism uh, is the the hallmark is the bone resorption which is seen uh, subperiosteally subchondral subligamental intracortical bone resorption is seen there will be terminal tuff erosion and this is called as acroosteolysis that is the resorption of the distal phalanges rugger jersey spine is also noted in the uh, hyperparathyroidism osteopenia round tumors and salt and pepper uh, sign in this skull that is also called as pepper pot skull now we will do all these features separately for the diagnosis of uh, hyperparathyroidism x ray hand plays a vital role so this is x ray hand uh, bilateral x ray hand and this is ap view Uh, uh, demonstrating uh, generalized decrease uh, density decrease bone density and there is resorption of the distal phalanges or terminal tuff 
these are this these are the desorption of the distal phalanges and this is called as acro osteolysis and there is a subperiosteal uh, bone desorption which is uh, seen along the radial aspect of the middle phalanx there you can see there is bone resorption is seen there, there is concavity increased concavity is seen along the middle phalanx of the second and third digit so this resorption this is hallmark of the hyperparathyroidism bilaterally you can appreciate there is resorption of the uh, along the radial aspect of the middle phalanx of second and third digit this is subperiosteal erosion along with that intracortical this is intracortical resorption these small uh, holes are the intracortical resorption then coming to the rugger jersey spine now due to the deposition of osteoid along the superior and inferior end plate this sclerotic lucent sclerotic margin is called as rugger jersey spine and it resembles rugby jersey that's why it, it is called as rugger jersey spine this is also seen in renal osteodystrophy uh, i will tell you features of renal osteodystrophy afterwards so here you can see sclerotic lucent and then sclerotic margin along the superior and inferior end plate this is called as rugger jersey spine again this is x ray lumbosacral spine this is ap view this is lateral view demonstrating the rugger jersey spine sclerotic sclerotic lucent and then sclerotic margin at multiple levels along with osteophytes these are osteophytes and generalized decreased bone density is also noted this is rugger jersey spine then coming to the brown tumors now i told you that the uh, most of these metabolic bone disease are due to imbalance between the osteoclastic and the osteoblastic act activity now what happens uh, when there is chronic renal failure there is hypocalcemia uh, or and uh, there is increased uh, excretion of calcium uh, in the urine which leads to mobilization of calcium from the bones and uh, calcium is mobilized from the bone by the osteoclastic activity when there is increase osteoclastic activity focal increase for osteoclastic activity the it forms brown tumors so these are the brown tumors these are well defined osteolytic expansile lesion involving the metadiaphysis these are not involving the epiphysis here you can see they are involving the metadiaphysis this is also a feature of uh, hyperparathyroidism again this is x ray uh, shoulder ap view demonstrating uh, a large osteolytic expansile lesion involving the lateral end of the clavicle so again this is a brown tumor giant cell tumors comes in the differential diagnosis of these uh, brown tumor they are also uh, osteoclastomas then next you see pepper pot skull there is ground glass haze involving the this is x ray skull lateral view involving the skull along with tiny numerous uh, uh, osteo osteolytic lesion these small lesions giving the skull pepper pot like appearance this is called as pepper pot skull and it is also a pathognomonic feature of hyperparathyroidism along with that the cortical thickening in distinctness of the inner table and outer table is also noted in this section uh next is the hypoparathyroidism hypoparathyroidism results from reduced secretion of parathyroid hormone and it is seen what is the cause of hypoparathyroidism the most common cause of hypoparathyroidism anyone most common cause of hypoparathyroidism hydrogenic yes after uh, surgery which surgery thyroidectomy very good so after thyroidectomy uh, hypoparathyroidism uh, may be seen 
and there will be uh, high levels of phosphate and low levels of calcium along with normal alkaline phosphatase level. So the feature which are seen in hypopathism uh, radiologically are the um, intracranial calcification. Uh, here you can see this is CT scan of brain demonstrating diffuse calcification involving the bilateral basal ganglia. This uh, calcif intracranial calcification is also seen in subcortical region and uh, other uh, nuclei of the uh, basal ganglia thalami. So another image of the uh, hypoparathyroidism. This is a CT scan of the brain. This is axial section and this is sagittal section demonstrating bilateral diffuse calcification of the caudate nucleus and the uh, lentiform nucleus and the thalamus. And also uh, few specks of calcification is noted in the subcortical region. These are few specks which are involving the subcortical region. Uh, calcification may also be seen in the corona radiata. Uh, this is uh, X-ray CT. Uh, this sorry, this is CT scan um, bone window uh, demonstrating the uh, calcification of the uh, Park cerebrum. Here you can see exuberant calcification of the Park cerebrum, and there is thickening of the calvarium, which is also noted in the uh, hypoparathyroidism. Then coming to the acromegaly. Acromegaly is a result of excessive growth hormone uh, in the adults when it is uh, seen in the uh, unfused skeleton, it is called as gigantism and it is due to the um, pituitary adenomas. Usually it is due to the pituitary adenomas. So this is uh, x-ray skull, lateral view of a normal, of a normal adult. And this is uh, a case of uh, acromegaly. Now, um, can anybody appreciate what's going on in this x-ray? This is normal on the right side. And on the left side, this is abdominal. Can anybody read this x-ray? Prognathism. So, what is prognathism? In abnormal, there is frontal bossing. Okay. Increased cortical thickening. Prognathism is the protrusion or the bulging of the jaw. Mandible is protruding out. So, the uh, the first thing which is noted in this X-ray is the enlarged bones as compared to this normal x-ray. Then uh, prognathism or the protruding of the mandible is appreciated. And uh, this is normal cellar tersica or pituitary fossa. And here you can appreciate enlarged cellar tersica or pituitary fossa because of the pituitary adenoma. Large, bulbous, rounded, pituitary fossa because of the presence of pituitary adenoma. This is normal cellar tersica or pituitary fossa. There is cortical thickening. No cortical thickening is appreciated in normal x-ray. So prognathism, enlarged cellar tersica or the pituitary fossa and cortical thinning, thickening is noted uh, in the acromegaly in x-ray skull. In hands, uh, you will uh, find spade-like uh, appearance of the terminal tufts. Here you can see spade-like appearance of the terminal tuft. Pituitary adenoma will lead to acromegaly because of the excessive secretion of the growth hormone. Acromegaly occurs because of the pituitary adenoma, because of the secretion of growth hormone.
so uh, here in hands you will find spade like appearance of the terminal tufts here you can see spade like appearance of the terminal tufts and another feature which is seen in uh, acromegaly patients uh, is the hook like osteophyte along the radial aspect of the uh, meta distal uh, end of the metacarpal the metacarpal heads are enlarged and there is hook like osteophyte this is hook like osteophyte it is seen bilaterally and spade like terminal tufts Uh, in acromegaly, there will be increase in the heel pad thickness. Normal heel pad thickness is two centimeter, and in this case, it is two point nine centimeter. So, increase heel pad thickness is also fine in acromegaly. Then, coming to the scurvy. Scurvy is a condition which is caused by the dietary deficiency of vitamin C. And it is also called as hypovitaminosis C, and it is characterized by increased bleeding tendency and impaired collagen synthesis. It results in uh, the osteoporosis, and because of the bleeding, different uh, uh, type of uh, etiological features are seen in scurvy. So, first of all, uh, the first feature is the subperiosteal. Hemorrhage, which is seen. This is periosteum of the uh, bone, and the inner lining of the cortex is called as endosteum, and the outer lining is called as periosteum. So, when there is subperiosteal hemorrhages, the periosteum is elevated and gives this type of Im uh, image. So, first thing, due to the bleeding, subperiosteal hemorrhages are seen. Then this is then lucent metaphyseal bands are seen. This is called as tremor field zone, and there is dense zone of provisional calcification because of the deposition of osteoid, and this is called as Frankel's line or white line of Frankel. Then uh, the spur are seen at the distal end of the. Uh, this is margins of the metaphysis. These are called as calcin spur. And Wimberger sign is the uh, penciling of the epiphysis or increased density of the uh, epiphysis is seen. This is called as Wimberger sign. So I will repeat subperiosteal hemorrhages. Tremor field zone is the lucent metaphysial band. Dense zone of provisional calcification is the Frankel's line, and Wimberger sign is the increased density along the epiphysis, ring like the increased density. And Falcon spur is the um, uh, spur or the outgrowth seen at the uh, lateral margins of the metaphysis. This is X-ray uh, knee joint, bilateral knee joints, demonstrating all the features of the scurvy. So you can appreciate there is dense zone of uh, the uh, the the outline of the epiphysis are in, uh, showing increased density. This is called as uh, the Wimberger sign, and there is dense zone of provisional uh, calcification. This this is Frankel's line. And a thin lucent line is seen. This is tremor field zone. And these spurs are called as falcon spurs. No subperiosteal hemorrhage is noted in this image. So there is no elevation of periosteum. So this is end. Now we will take question answers. Any questions? Shall I repeat something? Okay. How is the other jersey sign different from changes seen in osteomalacia? Achha. One thing I would uh, like to tell you, there is a condition which is uh, called as renal osteodystrophy, which is seen in chronic renal failure patient. And in renal osteodystrophy, 
um, it is a mixture of the features of osteomalacia and hyperparathyroidism. So, uh, features of osteomalacia and hyperparathyroidism are seen in the um, renal osteodystrophy. And Ragal jersey spine is pathognomonic for the osteo uh, re renal osteodystrophy. First question. Okay, Ragal jersey spine. Uh, I will show you the image. Let me show you the image. So, this is Ragal jersey spine. A sclerotic lucent and a sclerotic band is seen along the superior end plate and the inferior end plate. But the vertebral body is normal in shape. There is no concavity along the superior end plate and the inferior end plate. Only there is increased density is seen along the superior end plate and the inferior end plate. This is Ragar Jersey spine. While in osteomalacia, there is concavity along the superior end plate and the inferior end plate, which is giving uh, appearance of the codfish vertebra. This is the main difference. Okay. And last slide, repeat current is scurvy king. Okay, lines and spurs. Okay. So the features of the scurvy is the subperiosteal hemorrhage due to elevation of the periosteum. Tremor field zone is the dense metaphyseal, uh, sorry, lucent metaphyseal band. And the dense zone of provision calcification is white line of Frankel or the Frankel's line. And ring line epiphysis, increased density along the margins of the epiphysis is called as Wimberger sign, giving the shape of burger like. Pelkin spur is the outgrowth seen at the metaphysis. These are the pelkin spur. What happened in the ricket? There was increased concavity of the metaphysis, there was indistinctness of the metaphysis. And there was widening of the metaphysis. These are not, this is not widening. This is, these are the spur. They are protruding outside the metaphys uh, metaphysian margin. So see, these are pelkin spur, Wimberger sign. This is tremor field zone. And this is the Frankel sign. On x-ray, here you can see dense zone of provisional calcification is the, what is it? Leucine band is the trauma field zone. Dense zone of provisional calcification is the Frankel's line, and this ring like epiphysis is the Wimberger sign. And these are the spurs, which are called as Pelkin spur. Okay, can you repeat fraying of metaphysis?